Moses, one of the one of the most powerful men in Scripture, was powerful and successful because he understood his God perfectly. Whatever his God spoke, whatever his God said to do, Moses responded favorably. Moses acted when God spoke. He followed through with God's instructions and carried them out precisely as God had laid them out for him. He knew that the word of God would not fail him, that God would be with him in the good times and in the difficult times, that the word of God was central to his walk with God, that if he was going to be the man of God that God had called him to be, that he was going to have to follow God's instructions to the letter. This morning, as we look to the scriptures, we're going to dive into to the truth and understanding how this truth, how this, this word of God, like how Moses, how he grasped it, how he understood it, what, what were the simple basic fundamentals that Moses understood that, that we need to understand today. There are four things that we need to embrace. But before we get to those, let's begin reading there in Psalm 119. If you would please stand. We're going to read Psalm 119 verses 9 through 16. Psalm 119 verses 9 through 16. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. You may be seated. Moses understood two very important facts and he answered two very important questions. The two important facts are first, God will not lie and God does not change. And the two important questions, when God speaks, He acts and when God promises, He fulfills. Let's begin with Numbers 23.19. Listen to what it says. God is not human that He should lie, not a human being that He should change His mind. Does He speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Moses understood the facts in this passage and he answered the questions. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Let us begin in the very beginning of Numbers 23, 19, verse 19. God is not human that he should lie. That's the first fact that we need to embrace. God is not human that he should lie. God's not lying to you. Jesus says that the father of all lies is the devil, that Satan is a deceiver, that his main weapon is to deceive you, to lie to you, to get you to believe a lie rather to embrace the truth. In Psalm 8935, the Lord says, I have sworn on oath to David, and in my holiness I cannot lie. We've got to embrace that fact that God does not lie. Yes, we live in a world filled with lies. Lies all around us. People lying all the time. Satan is the prince of this world, and why should it surprise us when he spreads his lies like seeds? Like a farmer as he's planting the fields, throwing his seeds out. Satan is populating this world with doubt, deception, lies. He wants God's people to be misled. He wants to draw them away from God with a lie. For he knows that the truth will anchor us to the Father. It will anchor us to the Lord. We will be anchored in His Word. Satan understands that. He recognizes what his challenges are. See, Satan knows what he's up against. He's witnessed. He's seen the power of God. And he knows that if he's going to have any many victories, he knows that the, eventually the war will be won by the Father in heaven. That when Christ Jesus comes as reigning king, Satan will be put to his ultimate doom. His resting place in the lake of fire. But until that time, he knows the only way that he can get God's people 
away from the Father is to draw them away with lies. And that's why God says, look, I am not a liar like the devil. When I tell you something, I'm telling you the truth. You can bank on it. You can hope in it. You can rely upon it. I do not lie. In John 17, 17, Jesus praying said this, Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Again, our Father in heaven speaks the truth. He speaks the truth to us in order that we will be able to determine the truth from the lies. Satan is speaking lies and so many people are, are following those lies and destroying their lives. They're destroying their families. They're destroying their relationships with their wives and their children because they're believing in lies. They follow the ways of the world. God says there in Numbers 23 19, I am not human that I should lie. There is no lie. There is no darkness in God. There is no blemish, no spot. When God speaks, He speaks only truth. And that's what He's declaring here. God is not human that He should lie. Look, we've got to embrace that. We've got to remember that whatever we read here in the Scriptures, it's the truth. It's the gospel truth. It's God's own word and He does not lie. The first fact. The second fact. Not, God is not a human being that He should change His mind. When God says He's going to do something, He's going to do it. He doesn't take back His word. He doesn't change His mind. In Psalm 89.34, God referring to the covenant He made with David, He says, No, I will not break my covenant. I will not take back a single word I said. Look, if God said something to you, He's not going to go back on His word. You can bank on Him keeping it. You can rely on Him coming through for you. He's not going to change His mind. Like so many people today, they change their mind. They say they're going to do something and they change their mind. And it, it upsets the balance oftentimes. It, it frustrates people when you have individuals in your circle that are consistently saying one thing but then changing their mind and doing exactly the very opposite or something quite different. And it's, it's hard to plan your life around those people that are changing their minds all the time. You don't know whether they're coming or they're going. It's very frustrating when you have people that say one thing but do another. They're inconsistent. It's very challenging to have relationships with those individuals. And God says, look, you can trust me that what I, I tell you I'm going to do, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to change my mind. I'm not like the sands of the sea that shift. I'm like the waves on the ocean that go to and fro. I'm not human that I should change my mind. God is not a human being that He should change His mind. Look, if God has said something to you, if you've read something here in the Scripture, you can bank on it. You can rely upon it. It's the truth. God will come through for you. These are two basic fundamental facts that I believe that Christians today are not really fully embracing. Moses had to embrace these two facts before he would be able to deliver God's people out of the land of bondage. He had to rely on the fact that God would not lie to him. Listen, God was asking him to do some pretty crazy things. If you really think about it, go and take all of these people out of Egypt and take them into this promised land. And Moses is like, really God, are you serious? I'm going to go up against Pharaoh and, and the Egyptian army. Do you know how great and powerful they are? God, are you really telling me the truth? Seriously? Lord, uh, uh, this is a very big job and it's just me. How am I going to do this? Are you telling me the truth, Father? Jesus knew that his father was always speaking the truth. Moses knew that God was speaking the truth. John the Baptist knew that God was speaking the truth. They all knew that their father in heaven was not lying to them. And so when God is asking you to do something today, no matter how hard it is, no matter how difficult the task, if God has asked you to do it, know this, he's not lying to you. There's something good that awaits you if you do what he's asking you to do. Look what was awaiting God's people, the land a promise, the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey where they would be free of their captors, free of slavery, free of bondage. Maybe you're in bondage today. Maybe you're 
being held by Satan today. Maybe there's a challenge, an obstacle, a hardship you're going through right now and you're like, Lord, can I, can I trust your word? Lord, are you telling me the truth? Is what you're saying to me really going to come to pass? I need to know, Father, that you're telling me the truth. We need to embrace the fact that God does not lie and that he doesn't change his mind. Look, Mo Moses, you're having to go into the, to the land there of Egypt and go and, and, and take God's people out. If he even doubted that God would change his mind and go back on his word, Moses would not have been successful. He relied on God's word knowing that if God spoke it, he would do it, that God would come through, that God wouldn't change his mind midstream and say, uh, uh, psych, I fooled you. <laughs> you thought I was going to deliver you. Change your plans. You're on your own, Moses. Good luck. God doesn't do that. God walks with you through the challenging times. He doesn't abandon you midstream. God says, I'm going to go with you no matter how difficult the obstacle, the challenge you're facing today, no matter what it is, God will go with you through it all the way. He's not going to change his mind midstream, back out on you, drop dime on you, leave you hanging. He's not going to do that. So you can go through the storms of life knowing that the Father is there with you, that his angels encamp around you, that he's your strong tower, he's your rampart. He, you can trust that He's going to be there when everyone else leaves you. Does not follow through with their word. Your Father in heaven will always come through for you. That's the second fact. God is not human that He should change His mind. He's not going to change His mind. He's not going to lie to you and He's not going to change His mind. You see, honesty is an expensive gift. Don't expect it from cheap people. God is honest. He's going to keep His word. He's going to do what He says He's going to do. You can't change the truth, but the truth can change you. God's truth will bring about positive change in your life. Does say that? Positive change in your life. God's truth will bring about positive change for you. Every single day time if you follow it, if you abide by it, if you hold on to it. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. The psalmist said, praise be to the Lord. Teach me your decrees. But there's two questions that we also must answer the first question does God speak and then not act does he speak and then not act does God say he's going to do something and then not do it let's just go to Isaiah chapter 38 7 through 4 uh, 7 through 8 Isaiah 38 7 through 8 Hezekiah was ill he was suffering he was preparing to die and God made him a promise and this is the Lord's sign to you that the Lord will do what he has promised I will make the shadow cast by the sun go back ten steps it has gone down on the stereo of Ahaz so the sunlight went back the ten steps it had gone down God said to Hezekiah look I made you a promise and I'm gonna fulfill this promise I'm going to keep my word to you. I have spoken and I will act. Now can you imagine what God had to do in order to get the sun to go backwards? He either had to move the sun or move the earth. He either had to rot rotate the sun or he had to spin the earth. He had to do something, right? Think about it for a moment. How did God do that? We know the sun as it's passing through. We see its shadow and it's moving in this direction, right? But all of a sudden, the sun is now doing this. The earth was rotating this way, and all of a sudden, maybe it was going back this way. We don't know how God exactly did it, but God intervened in nature to get his point, to get his promise across to Hezekiah. He sees Hezekiah 
heard the promise of God, but he wasn't quite sure whether God would keep his word. He wasn't quite sure if God was going to come through for him or not. If God would abandon him, if God was just saying it and didn't really mean it. Look, listen, if God says it, he means it. If God said it, he meant it, therefore I believe it, and that settles it for me. You see, Hezekiah wasn't quite settled yet. He wasn't quite sure whether or not God was going to come through for him. God made him a promise. God, are you going to fulfill it? Am I really going to recover? I'm deathly ill. I'm going to die. Are you going to save me? You said you would, but are you really going to do it? Are you going to keep your word, God? Maybe today you're questioning whether or not God's going to keep his word to you in your particular situation. Think about your situation that you're in right now. Very challenging, difficult, hard situation. Doesn't appear to be a way out, but God has said that He's going to deliver you. In the Scripture, God has promised that He's going to set you free. Do you believe He's going to do it? Or do you think that He's just talking here, just to talk? Just to entertain you with words? See, Hezekiah wasn't quite sure, and God says, let me, let me, let me make it perfectly clear to you, Hezekiah. I am going to heal you. I'm going to give you 15 more years. You're going to accomplish great things for me. You're going to do some amazing things. I'm going to place my healing hand upon you. I'm going to set you free from that illness. I'm going to do it because I don't speak and then not act. No, when I speak, I act. See, Moses had to, to believe that when God said that he was going to deliver his people, that he would deliver his people. Moses had to believe that before he would go out in the service of God. And before you face these challenges, before you move forward, you're going to have to come to grips with the fact that God is going to do what He said He would do. He's going to come through for you. He's going to deliver you. The second question that we need to answer, does He promise and not fulfill? Does God make promises and then not fulfill them? The Bible is filled with promises. All you have to do is open up the Bible and you'll read all the promises that God has made to His people. Does God not keep His promises? Does God not fulfill His promises to His people? Well, let's look at Joshua 14, 9 through 11. Joshua 14, 9 through 11. Joshua, speaking here, says, So on that day Moses swore to me, The land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance, and that of your children forever, because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Now then, just as the Lord promised, He has kept me alive for 45 years since the time He said this to Moses, while Israel moved about in the wilderness. So here I am today, 85 years old. I am still as strong as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. God made a promise to Joshua that he would see the promised land, that he would enter the promised land. God made a promise to Joshua. And God kept his promise to Joshua. Joshua had to walk with the rest of the Israelites in the desert for those 40 years. God made him a promise and God fulfilled that promise. And here, he, here Joshua was saying, listen to every one of us. Joshua was saying, listen people. Listen to what God did for me. He fulfilled the promise that he made through his servant Moses to me. That I would enter the promised land. Can you imagine Joshua being 40 plus or minus years at this time? Wondering, Lord, you're going to keep these people wandering the desert for 40 years? And then I'm going to take them into the promised land? Really, God? That's your promise? Are you going to keep it? Are you going to fulfill it? Will I enter the promised land? And here he is now saying, listen... All of you people, listen to me. So here I am today, 85 years old. 
I'm still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Joshua says, listen, time may have passed, but I am still as strong as I was back then 40 years ago. My strength has not left me. The power which God has given me is still with me. God is still going to use me to deliver these people just like He promised. Maybe you're getting weak and you're thinking that God has abandoned you, that God has left you. Maybe you're, you're beginning to lose momentum. You've got some difficulties in your home. You've got some difficulties in your workplace. Financial trouble. Maybe you're not sure whether to go to the right or left. You've got some decisions to make. And you're wondering whether God is going to keep His promises that He's made to you in the Scriptures. Listen to what Joshua has to say. If God did this for Joshua, He's going to do it for you too. Two facts. God does not lie. And God does not change His mind. If we don't get those two fundamental facts straight, we're not going to be able to accomplish great things in our lives. We're not going to be successful. We're not going to be victorious. We're not going to defeat our enemies, succeed where others have failed. We're not going to overcome the obstacles in our life, reach our goals. We're not. It's not going to happen. God is saying, listen, embrace the fact that I do not lie to you. I speak only the truth. The only people mad at you for speaking the truth are those people who are living a lie. You know, we're trying to live the truth. We're trying to walk in the way of truth. And there's so many obstacles that we face along the way. People are trying to convince us that the truth that we're believing in, the truth that we're following is actually a lie. I've had people tell me that the life I'm living is not the life that Christ would have me live. That, that the life that I'm living today is not the way of Christ. They would try to convince me that spending time in the Word is, is a waste of time. That it's, I'm spending too much time in the Word. I'm spending too much time in prayer. I'm spending too much time serving. That I just have to go out and just live a little. You know, just, just kick it to the curb for a while. Just take a siesta. Take a break. Take vacation from God. Go out there and just live life large and just leave God behind for a brief moment. He'll still be there for you. You can come back to Him when you're ready. No, wherever I go, God goes with me. His Word is with me. Prayer is with me. Serving others is with me. Wherever my feet are, that is my mission field. Whether I'm at work or at play, on vacation, at home, wherever I'm at, there God is. And therefore, I must be about the work of the Lord. I'll have time to play when I get into heaven. truth sounds like hate to those who hate the truth. The truth sounds like hate to those who hate the truth. When you live a life of truth, people are going to take offense to that. Because you're not living the way the world is living. And therefore, you must be the problem. You must be the obstacle. You must be the issue. It can't be the world for there's millions and billions of people in this world that are going in this direction and you're going in this direction. That, therefore, that means you must be the reason why there's so many problems. No. Jesus said that if we follow the truth that the world would hate us. The world would come against us. So God does not lie and He doesn't change His mind. When He speaks, He acts. And when He promises, He fulfills. Jesus made some promises to the apostles. He said that that we would be put into the grave. But then on the third day he would rise from the dead. He made them a promise. He says, I'm going to be put to death. But on the third day I'm going to rise. Can you imagine the challenge that the apostles had with that? With that statement that Christ made? <laughs> what do you mean, Jesus? 
You're going to get put into the grave. And then three days later, you're going to rise from the dead. What's that? No one has ever risen from the dead. Jesus, are you, are you lying to us? Are you going to change your mind? Are you just speaking and then you're not going to act? Is this a promise you're going to fulfill? The apostles had to answer those questions and believe in the facts. Hold on to the facts. 